Hello. Hello, may I speak to Oliver Smithies, please? Yes, may I ask who is calling? Yes, this is Adam Smith from the Nobel Foundation's website. Yes, just a second, please. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Oh, good morning. Is that Professor Smithies? Yes, it is. People sometimes ask me, what should I do to get a Nobel Prize? And I say, well, first of all, you should forget about that aim. It's not a good aim. People who aim to get a Nobel Prize rarely get one. Nobel Prizes are, come to people who have found something out or discovered something or invented something uh, which is completely unexpected or very world shaking you might say uh, and those sorts of things don't happen uh, just because you want to get a Nobel Prize they happen if you think of something that is important or you do something which is new and so uh, it isn't something that anybody can plan for you just have to enjoy your work and do the best you can in your work maybe you'll be lucky and it will be important maybe it won't be important but if you enjoy it, it doesn't really matter. My PhD is an example. I, I spent two years, it was a short time in England to get a PhD. I spent two years of research developing a, developing a method uh, to measure osmotic pressures. And I got beautifully precise results, extremely accurate. And I published my paper. And you know, nobody ever quoted that paper. Nobody ever used the method. I never used the method again. So you could say, well, you wasted your time for two years doing something unimportant. But it's completely wrong. Because, first of all, I learned to do good science. That's what a PhD is about. It's not what you do, it's what you learn how to do. Uh, I don't uh, go around uh, pontificating, uh, which I I'm afraid is a disease that sometimes attacks Nobel Prize winners. Uh, but I do enjoy talking to students about what it's been like to be a scientist for as long as I have. And I, I can tell students a little bit about what it's like to have been a scientist so long. And I find that, that that's very rewarding. I think all children are budding scientists really because if you go back to age two and you look at a child, a baby, what we're trying around, it's exploring everything. I mean, it's just looking and <laughs> touching and, and fiddling and tearing apart. And so we're all scientists when we're young, and it, it just unfortunately in some it dies. But I think a, um, a, a scientist never grows up and becomes a, a curiosity-driven person for the rest of his or her life.